Hello friends and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. This is Chapter 6 Part C of the Basics of C Programming Language. And we are continuing our topic C Variables. Now we shall study about the derived data types. C has the following derived data types. One is pointers, arrays, structures and unions. So pointer. What is a pointer? Pointers are a very unique feature of C language. They provide us with a way to access the memory location of any variable directly. So this gives the user an exceptional control over his code. This kind of feature is not given by most of the programming languages. Okay, It is because pointers need to be handled with great responsibility as it is said that with great power comes great responsibility the same saying holds over here also because if you by mistake access some of the memory location which is not to be accessed inside your code which is not in the access of your code your operating system will kill your program so your program will just die so it might not be a big impact on your small programs or on programs which are not critical enough but think of a real time system where suppose on the assembly line the cars are being manufactured and in the mid of the assembly line processing the program suddenly died so the whole manufacturing process would stop and the company will suffer a huge loss so in such situations, it is very, very important that you use your pointers carefully. Okay, And because it is a very advanced topic, we shall only learn the basic about the pointers in this course. That is the basic of programming in C language. And the advanced course on pointers will be taken in advanced course on programming in C language later on. The definition of the pointer says that a pointer is a variable which stores the memory address of another variable. Okay, so what does a pointer do? It just stores the memory address of another variable. Now in C language or in any general computer terms, the memories are addressed based on hexadecimal values. So memory addresses are given in the hexadecimal values. Okay, so hexadecimal value is what? It is just a number. So the data type of a pointer is equivalent to that of an integer. So the size that a pointer will take on memory will just be equal to that of an integer because it has ultimately to store an integer value inside it. A pointer must have the same data type as that of the variable whose address it is intended to take. Now this is very important that if you want to store the address of an integer variable say inside a pointer you should also declare the data type of that pointer to be an integer okay and if you want to store the address of a character variable into a pointer then the data type of the pointer should also be character type okay. so how is a pointer declared inside a c program this is given by this statement to declare a pointer it is just declared as a normal variable so as the data type is there then there is asterisk which is followed by the name of the pointer so this asterisk symbol is very important and it is known as the d reference operator inside c language and to declare a pointer name you need to put this asterisk before the variable name okay this will declare a pointer now Basic use of pointers we will learn later on in our course, in this course only, but advanced use of pointers we will not touch in this course. Okay, now arrays. So an array is a collection of variables of same data type. So all the variables of one single data type can be stored in an array. Suppose all the variables of integer type can be stored in one array. The same array cannot store a variable of a different data type. It will not be possible to store an integer and a character in the same array. Okay. Now, the declaration of arrays is done in the similar fashion as the variables, but we have to specify the size of the array or the number of elements in that array using the square brackets just after the name of the variable. Suppose the name of our variables is numbers, okay, and we have to store suppose 
10 numbers in a single array. So we will use this way. The declaration will be this way. Int, which is the data type. Numbers, which is the name of the array. And in square brackets, you mention 10. Okay. So 10 elements of integer data type can be stored in the array number. Okay, and later on we can access it using array indexing. This part we will learn in a advanced stage in our course in the later chapters which will deal with the arrays. Okay, for the time being just for an introduction we have shown how to declare an array. Okay, also we should learn that where we can use the arrays. Okay, here an array can be used wherever you need to store multiple values of the same data type. So instead of declaring 10 different integer variables for storing 10 numbers, you can use one single variable of an array type and have a size of 10. Okay, so suppose we need to store the age of 10 students in our code, we can use an array with the size of 10, integer array with the size of 10. Now a brief about structures and unions. Structures and unions will also be covered in the advanced course on C language in detail, but here we can have a brief overview of what structure is. A structure can be used to create collections to store variables of different data types together. Now the limitation of array was that it used to store the variables of similar data types, okay, homogeneous collections, arrays or homogeneous collections, but here structures can store the variables of different data types. The same structure can store integer values also and character values also. Okay. Now unions. Now unions are also the collections which can store the value of different data types but the difference between a structure and a union is that at the given moment a union can hold the value only of one data type. Okay. So if you have two variables declared inside a union. Suppose one member of the union is an integer and another member is character and you have assigned some value to character variable. Now you cannot use the integer element of that union. Okay, But in structure this is not true. Structures all the members can exist at the same time but in union only one member can exist at one time. Okay. So the advanced learning of structures and unions will be done only in the advanced course. This is the end of the chapter on the data types. So thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. Continue watching basics of programming in C language. Thank you very much.